It's not uncommon for old barns in our area to get torn down once they're weathered and worn out. But every once in a while, we're lucky enough that one of them gets saved from the burn pile. And that's something we should all be smiling about. Dig Drive DIY! I'm old enough to remember more than a dozen large barns that would have been visible on the horizon, just from where I'm standing. Unfortunately though, all but two of them that were within eye shot have been torn down just in my lifetime. Matter of fact, one of those ghost barns used to be right here on this property. There were actually several different styles of barns that you'd see across the countryside. By far the most common was the gable style roof, just like our old granary here. They've got a single pitch, triangle shaped gable, and they're usually the easiest and cheapest to build. These have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and are probably still the most popular today. My new shop is a gable style barn, for example. It just doesn't have a very steep roof and there's no second story. The second most popular barn built around these parts is probably the gambrel style, or sometimes people call them hip roof barns. These are easy to spot because the roof has two different pitches per side and they are built to be tall and they date clear back to the mid 1600s. These were built mainly for livestock and hay storage because they have so much overhead unobstructed space or cubic footage. The huge barn that still exists at my parents' homestead is a gambrel style or a hip roof barn and it's a very impressive example of what they could accomplish in the 19th century. But can you imagine working on that roof? Jeez. And finally, the least common style of barn around here is what eventually evolved from the gambrel style, and that is the Gothic arch. The Gothic barns began being built around 1885 and by 1915 became the most popular barn design sold by Sears. But by the 1930s, these barns began to go out of style as farms were transitioning from animal powered machinery to gasoline tractors. So the large storage space for hay was really no longer necessary, meaning that even the newest of these big old barns are now easily over a hundred years old. And it's an unfortunate reality that once they reach a certain age and level of disrepair, the cost of maintaining or restoring them just isn't worth the square footage they provide. Heck, I've even begrudgingly faced this situation myself. But every once in a while, somebody comes along with the proper means and interest to breathe new life into one of these old relics. It isn't easy or cheap, but with a plan and some effort, Hopefully the end result can be well worth it. And that's the situation for my cousin and this old Gothic arch barn that resides on their property. He's a fourth generation farmer and this homestead has been in his family for over half a century. All right, so this is my cousin, John. He's the one that's getting it moved. This is quite a project. This is not something you get to see every day. So appreciate you sharing it with us. No problem. Why would you save a building like that? Just a lot of sentimental value to it. I mean, it's been in the family for since 1955. 55 so, yeah. is how long? My great-grandfather bought this place back in 1955. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know of any other barns around close to home that have that kind of, that round roof. That There used to be a lot more than what there are now, so I'm super glad that you're saving it. This yeah, is awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, the inside actually, the uh, rafters were uh, laminated one by fours. Yeah. Wow. I'm guessing laminated. Yeah. It's just a mile or so from their main farming operation, but he and his family wish to make this property their forever home. The barn in its current state isn't very practical for their modern operation, so it would need some updates and repairs to remain useful. Plus, it's gonna be in the way of their future new home site, so they've made the decision to invest in the future and not just keep the barn, but move it and improve it so that it can serve their farm and family well into the future. So the process for moving a building this size is simple in theory, but very sophisticated with today's equipment. The team at Wolf uses a set of jacks and dollies that are all interconnected to one another to maintain proper balance and weight distribution. The entire building was first jacked up and suspended in place using I-beams and wooden cribbing to hold it up so the old foundation could be removed from under it. The hydraulic jacks connect with hoses to a central control manifold that can control each jack individually, groups of them as zones, or all of them together as one so that the building raises up evenly. Then individual dollies are placed under two large I-beams and the cribbing is removed so that the barn then rests on the dollies. The dollies are also attached to a central control system called a smart steer that can not only lift the building, but they propel it, steer it, 
and act as a suspension system. The smart steer system rides along inside the barn while it moves and it's remote controlled and monitored through a tablet display. If one dolly rolls over a high spot, it lowers its jack down and the other dollars may have to rise up to compromise. In this way, the system keeps the building level and stable even if the wheels are traversing over uneven terrain. It is some incredible technology that made this move look surprisingly easy. But I think most of that was due to the fact that these guys really know what they're doing. They can steer and move these axles all on their own. I thought they were gonna have to pull it with something, but they're driving it with these wheels. And these look like they're fixed, but they're trying to get off this concrete pad and then they'll drive it around back. It's incredible. Isn't that amazing? I, I just... It is amazing. see that damn thing go... Did they unhook the power? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is in the process of being moved. Pretty wild. Got all the people here watching and filming. That was actually incredible to watch. I couldn't hardly keep up with it. They were going so fast. Total time to move the barn from there to here once it got going was probably 30 minutes or less. I don't know, I was too busy trying to fly the drone and move the cameras, but that was really neat to see. Back in the day, they moved barns and houses all the time and you, you don't see it as frequently now, at least around here. They're too quick to tear these barns down. So that was awesome. Looks like right now they're in the process of uh, taking the jacks out from under it. So. They'll set up the cribbing again and crib up to the I-beams probably so they can get the axles out from under there. That's my guess. And now they're gonna come back next and pour the walls on top of that concrete footer. They'll pour the walls to nine feet while the barn is suspended in the air. And then once the uh, concrete's cured, they'll set the barn down on its new walls. They'll be done, so. But he's raising it up with that thing. You see it's going up there. adjusting the blocks to get it just right. He raised it up three eighths of an inch on this side so that they can make it level. You guys are pretty much wrapped up then? Yeah, I got grabbed in two little six inch up there. Load everything up. They'll be back after they pour the walls and let it down. Yeah. Good to meet you. You too. It was Andrew, right? Yes. All right, thanks a lot. You bet. been almost a week since they jacked up the barn and put it down here in its new location and today they've showed up to set forms and hopefully get walls poured and then I don't know if by the end of the week they can set the barn back down but pretty soon this floating barn will have a nice sturdy foundation to rest upon. Alright so they've spent most of the day getting this formed up and this is quite a complicated form job because there's a lot of intricacies that you've got to consider. This barn has two big overhead doors that need to go in 
Plus it's got some windows and some walkthrough doorways and all that needs to be framed up inside of the forms before they can pour. So they use just regular lumber, treated lumber to get that all formed up. And then there's a lot of form ties that go in between the forms. Just a, a lot of stuff to think about and to get done before they pour any concrete. Now on this particular job, you can't use a regular front discharge cement mixer like you would on flat work because the, the form is so high that basically the truck can't reach. So they've brought in a pump truck. Miller's is here and Brandon's gonna run this truck with a remote control. It's got a 100 foot reach. So he said if he were to reach out directly in front of the truck, he can go 100 feet. But since this barn is so tall, he'll have to do it in two sets. So he'll sit here behind the barn to do half of it then they'll move the truck around the other side to do the other half. So when the concrete trucks get here, they will just dump right into the back of the pump truck and then Brandon will control it all the way around as they pour it in. What kind of a slump do they have to do you have to run in order to pump it? Uh, I don't like going anything less than about four slump. Really? Yeah, you get get too dry, it just gets kind of hard to pump. You would think it'd be hard to pump, but yeah. yeah. What yeah, uh, ideally would about a five, five and a half is really real good in the pump. How much does it take to fill the whole thing? Uh, about, I'd say about three quarters of a yard. Three quarters of a yard, I'll yeah, fill it up. That. All right, as many of you know, I'm a sucker for any kind of truck. And I thought this pumper truck was so cool. I wanted to give you a closer look. I'll spin you around. The 50 foot sides have to be 10 inches thick for code. And then uh, the front and back had to be eight inches. Eight inches thick, wow. 50 feet or greater, they said that they needed to be 10 inches okay. wide. And how tall are the walls? Nine foot. Nine foot walls. And how many yards do they think for in the walls? I calculated it out to be around 37. So I'm guessing they're going to plan on getting, you know, 37 to 38, I would think. 37. That's why I couldn't believe how many yards were in the footer. He said there was 30 yards in the footer. Yeah. So you got eight foot above the ground and it's 37 and only Not nine foot. Oh, above nine the foot. Ground. Yeah. Yeah. And but they said it was like 14 or 16 inches wide, the footer was, three foot down. This has been so cool to watch. I can't wait to see what it looks like once it's all done and the forms are stripped off. We'll check back on it then. Well, I'm back. It's early on a Friday morning, not even eight o'clock yet. And the crew got here to let the barn back down on the foundation. They already got it almost all the way back down. Walls are now stripped. They look good. Eventually they're gonna bring the siding on down the wall. That's why you see this two by four line here they can bring it down they'll have a place to secure siding so that not so much of the walls exposed concrete but yeah this barn is looking good i'll probably have her down here in no time and we'll get a final look at how everything turned out four jacks all tied together use that control box over there to let down Glad to gonna have this all done, John. Finally. Finally. Yeah. It's looking awesome though. Oh yeah, I'm very happy. Your new hangout. For a little while. <laughs> Cleaning up some beams today. Wow. Totally redoing everything in here. Okay, I'm back on a late night mission. It's about 7.30 in the evening, and I couldn't stand the thought of them burning those beams. So, I'm gonna load them up. I had them save them. All right there. I still got that load of wood on Louie. We're gonna try to load up as many of these beams as I can get on the trailer and take them home. Greg's coming to help me. There he is.
well it's actually been a couple of months since they've done much work on the barn you notice that they tore the hay miles out of it and the hay miles were really cool and all those timbers and it was neat and functional back then but it didn't provide much room to put anything in it of any size so they've taken out the hay miles and got rid of the timbers unfortunately i was a benefactor of that but they are finally back here today there's crews on site to set up and get ready to pour concrete on the floor once they get the floor in then they'll be able to move on to putting the doors in and such but today is just all about the concrete so you're putting a second story in it that's the plan as of right now eventually huh I can't wait to see that second story. That'll give you tons of space up there though. All right, so they're getting ready to pour it. We will check back when they get it all done. And then hopefully they'll get the door on before this video is over with. That's the goal. This barn, even in its original state, was awesome. A standing piece of history and an architectural artifact of a bygone era. It was built to shelter livestock down below and up above was a bunch of cubic feet to store hay and straw, but it hasn't been used for either of those purposes in years. Decades, really. And rather than tear it down and let it be lost to the past, the Rumkeys have chosen to give it new life. By removing the old hay mouths, they've opened up new possibilities for machinery storage and maybe even a future workshop down the road. The newly installed overhead doors are even large enough to accommodate a modern combine, and that'll free up some storage space at the main farm location and there's still enough overhead space to put in a second story, which they hope to do pretty soon. With some new siding this summer and a finished landscape around the outside, this old barn will practically be brand new again. But the best part about this barn now is that it's still here. Not every single one of these old barns has been erased from the landscape. And I won't have to try to explain to my grandkids what an old round-roofed or gothic-style barn used to look like. No, I can just bring them over here, let them play around inside, and let them see it and experience it for themselves. And I call that a win. So I'm grateful to the Runkies for many reasons personally, but preserving the history and legacy of this barn is something I think that all the members of our rural community can be thankful for because we can look back and see our history. This one didn't have to be burned down. If you'd like to see the progress of the remodeling throughout the rest of this summer as they put on new siding and put in a second story, then let me know down in the comments. But until then, hopefully we'll have something else to watch. And if I'm lucky, you'll be there to check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Stuff in there to talk about while it's, you know, if you don't mind. And then I have this real cool function here. <laughs> Oh yeah, I got a new hat out of this deal too, so I'm a sucker for a free hat. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember more than a dozen, dozen? I'm gonna have to feed the cats. And that's reason enough to give all of us something to smile about. I was doing so perfect. So I'm grateful to the Rumpkery. Preserving this barn and its legacy, legacy, one more time. Because so many folks in our community can look to this and see where we came from. Okay, <laughs> do it one more time.